Hey guys, Romy here. So please like, comment, subscribe. This is my review for Married to Medicine Season 5. Can you believe this Season 5, Episode 3? Let all throw, wait, let's all throw a fit in, a fit, a fit in this. Oh, okay, no, fit in. Because that's Dr. Jackie's new thing. Remember, she had Fizz knew it. Now she has this new endeavor to kind of go on top of that. Everyone has relationship issues right now. Everyone has relationship issues that's on this show on some level. And that's going to mean the main focal point for a large percentage of the show. The show starts off with, we'll start off with Contessa, Dr. Contessa, and Toya. So Dr. Contessa is Toya's friend. And she comes over to Toya's house. You know, we're kind of trying to show how, you know, Toy is just white because all of the wifely duties that she's doing, um, it's taxing, but, you know, she's getting it done. And I'm saying, okay, well, that's technically the job that you signed up for. So, all good. She's not complaining. So, we're all good. No problems. Dr. Contessa, we kind of go over her resume, how she was a part of the Navy, how she was a Navy flight um, surgeon. And she's just a boss. She's a boss. And she doesn't understand how, out of all the years of her being on this planet Earth, she came to this group of women. She wasn't sure how the group was going to be. And so she had her guard up. And so the first person that she she has a weird interaction with is Dr. Heavenly. She actually called her, what did she call her, Reckon Ralph? She called her something crazy uh, to Toya. And she was just like, I don't know how to deal with her. Everyone, Dr. Jackie was chill. Simone was cool. It's that one chick over there and she's talking about dr heavenly now we do know dr heavenly she overreacted um did contessa overreact no and i that, that's the thing okay so dr heavenly's talking to her daughter and the issue that's currently going on is that dr heavenly needs her reality check so laura is going to give her her reality check she said, here's what happened. I met I met this girl, and, you know, I was just playing up. Oh, my God, you're so beautiful. You're so gorgeous. And, you know, she was just, and her response was kind of weird. So then I kind of, I was just, like, done with her. And Aurora, Aurora said it best. You know you're kind of abrasive. Why? Dr. Heavenly keeps sending up her daughter. Originally, we were talking about how, all oh, the daughter needs to chill. No, you need to stop asking your daughter those things because you want her to lie? Is that what you want her to do? Because that's the only way that I see her not saying what we're all thinking. You act abrasive. Sometimes you, a lot of times you just go for the jugular. And <sighs> Dr. Heavenly was like, I don't want you to say that. Not today. I was like, get out of here with that bullshit. <laughs> and then Roy's laughing like, Mom, you know how you are. Why do you keep why do you keep putting me up in these situations? I'm supposed to just smile and wave. I understand that's what most kids would do, but you're my mother. And so, do you want me to go and mince words? Okay. That conversation that Toy had with Dr. Contessa, that what lasted a little too long. I'm thinking that okay, this scene needs to end. So then we see Quad. Quad's issue is that her husband. She doesn't feel like her husband values the work that she puts in and doesn't even really say thank you. Um, I can tell from what we're already getting that the husband's probably like, I provide a roof over your head. I was the one doing, you know, doing my thing for all this time before you came into the fray and started to contribute. And I think he still has that mentality of when he was just doing for Quad, you know, for the most part. And because of that, Quad's in a space where she she's trying to be a good wife so she's focusing on helping his business because she also agreed to it it wasn't like oh come and just do this she wanted to do it but now it's that whole boundary of i guess he's gotten so used to just telling her what to do when it came to certain things that it's not appreciated and that's her issue her issue isn't what she's doing with the exception of certain things that he's just kind of slacking off because even the dog pooped and he had to go work, so he just left. And yet, she's still gonna have to come there a little bit later to go. And it's like, oh, he was like, yeah, just come bring some stuff, beautify the place. And I see both sides. I see where he's, de I don't care what anyone says, he's definitely gotten very comfortable. And I see that 
you know, maybe on her end, she didn't put up the boundaries. Like, let's be honest. It takes two to tango at this point. So maybe she didn't put up the boundaries of, all right, I'm here to help you out, but you're going to respect me. If I was her, I would have said, okay, until I get some respect, because now that the disrespect has happened and you got accustomed to it, and even though I didn't deserve it, but you don't see it as disrespect, and maybe some other people wouldn't either, I'm going to show you what that feels like. You go and figure out what you're going to do with your business. Go, go and pay some, go and pay someone to go and do this. I understand. Yes, this is what I do. This is what I love. Yes, I would love to help you. Yes, I'm always asking, but I'm not just here. Just take it from me. Take, take, take. That's not what's happening here. Next thing we know. So I'm not mad at either of them. I just think boundaries need to be reestablished and respected. Now. We see, because when you compare the other stuff, the others have going on, I'm just like, this can be fixed. This really can. Dr. Jackie, she's talking with, um, she's talking with someone she's working with for her new fitness, you know, goal. And it's, it's, uh, Fitney, I believe is how you pronounce it. And it's essentially we come to you, you go and take your people, we go and do on the spot, um, different, you know, fun courses and obstacles, just get outside of the house. And that's great and all, but then some of her staff come in. They come in because her husband has given her gifts every single day, ever since this came out. So every single day, He's been, you know, going into that savings, going to that 401k, going to that severance, and been giving her the world or his, uh, what he feels like she would love. And today, aside from the flowers, he also, ooh, I mean, today was lit. So I think it was their anniversary it was either coming up or it was that day. Either way, they, she got a, a Swarovski crystal it, diamond I should say it was huge it was huge it was nice because it, it's their 15th year so it's crystal so I said oh, oh oh that's nice he also got her tulips and the other thing was Louis Vuitton I said yep that's new because that's the newer box that lighter color yep that's the newer box they used to have the darker brown ones but that light color is nice too it's still good material even though I kind of missed the anyway I don't know where that came from. Anyway, she reads the note and she's just like, it. Th she doesn't need any of this. Like it's appreciated until she remembers that why she's getting this stuff because she was disrespected and there's just no coming back for her. There's no coming back from what happened. And you just have to understand that and respect that. And she's at work so she's definitely not going to go and break down but it's just like oh i wish you could just take a break and just process all of this but i guess her version of doing that is going to her work and then having her moments and moving but <sighs> now dr simone she has her youngest baby out with her not not so young anymore but they go and <laughs> While they were going and getting ice cream or frozen yogurt, whatever they were getting in particular, she was she was like, mm, why don't you go and get some chocolate? He was like, you know, I like my ice cream just like I like my women. Why? I said, oh my God. I said, black, I said, I black, I said, black community, please don't. Black Twitter, please don't. Please. Child is young. Child is young. Let, let him be. Let it be, because I know there were some people out there, especially since the majority of women watch this, were like, because Simone was like, oh, can't you just add a little bit of chocolate there? I was like, why don't you want some chocolate? Like your mom said, you're trying to get the boy to go and want chocolate. Don't, what are you doing? Stop it. You're being counterproductive. Stop it. <laughs> anyway, she was like, I'll even take a swirl. In, ooh, a swirl can be nice too. <laughs> But once they actually sit down and he just expressed what's going on, he's afraid because things have gotten to the point where apparently they came, they were at church, they were arguing at church, arguing at church in the church parking lot. And some, some people call it Chick-fil-A church. So 
I'm going to go on a limb and say that he meant church. Jeez, what is wrong with my circulation? Let's check that out. Anyway, and she threw out the divorce word. And so he was like, I, uh, among that and some other stuff you never said before. So it made me nervous. And like, I, I, are you guys going to go and get a divorce? Because, you know, I talked to my brother and it's going to be interesting because when he leaves, because, you know, we have conversations about, you know, what's going on with you guys? Like conversations? Yes. Kids have conversations. Yes. Kids are a lot more involved than you sometimes remember. And he was like, she was saying how he used to cry whenever they'd have loud arguments and stuff. And he said, well, some of that was actually put on. Aside from me, you know, I'm the emotional one. My brother, nothing affects him. But I'm the emotional one. And I kind of did the crying so that you guys would stop. He said, oh, so manipulation. And Simone is like, oh, manipulation. Oh, great. Thank you. And I'm thinking, he doesn't want to see his parents go and split up. So he did what he had to do at the time to, you know, put a little band-aid. Now the band-aid's off. That's what's going on. Band-aids kept getting put on, get putting on instead of going and treating the wounds so that they can heal and everything could come together again. Oh, well, they're at the point where that's not going to work anymore, but he's put it out there. He doesn't want to have to choose. He's like, he wouldn't know how to choose. Don't make him choose. Um, We'll see how that goes. Now, Contessa, I can't believe Dr. Heavenly calls her Contessa. Dr. Heavenly is so disrespectful at times. And speaking of disrespect, did your family name Lord Mail person? Uh huh. What in the world? Anywho, so Contessa, she's at home. She of course, married to a doctor as well. I already told you her general background. Um, she, she's a boss. She has three kids. She has a nanny who, the nanny's son is a famous R&B singer, Darnell Collins or something like that. And they met a couple of years ago. The nanny has a personality, so that's going to be good for TV. <laughs> The nanny favors the husband, which is normally the case in a lot of relationships with like older women. And yeah. Anyway, we see Toya with her father, and we hear about that relationship. Toya, Toya bringing up her sex life with her father and trying to go and talk to her father, like, yeah, you know, it's weird because Eugene was saying, no, yeah, whatever her husband's name is, why don't you go? and get a shower rod or shower head attachment. I was like, huh? Well, I don't get it. It's like, you know, use it, you know, for sex as a sex toy. I'm thinking, what type of... But we find out that this isn't too far-fetched from what Toya said that when she was younger, she used to hear some interesting stuff go on in her father's room. Her father, you know, he played around the field all up and down time and time again there's actually one point where he was rotating women and it was like on this day this is samantha samantha's picture is up on the wall oh, okay samantha's coming i need you to go run home put up uh sabrina and then oh, okay take that down and put up uh francis and then put, put and i said what type of mess is that and then toy said look you know love you but because of that mess what ended up happening is she really grew to not trust men and she even with eugene she just looked at him like yeah you're gonna do the same thing to me like if i did and you know even now where they've been married for so long have kids the whole shebang she still kind of questions him on certain things and he's and she's like, she understands that the problem is her because he doesn't actually give her any reason to feel that way. Um, and she was like, it's weird because, you know, and I knew it. She uses sex as a position of power. She figures that if she keeps him satisfied, make sure that he isn't bored, that he isn't going to go the route of her father. But she also understands that he is completely different from her father. And that's why it works. Her father even told her that 
your dude said that he because i warned him that you're a lot and he said i think i can handle i think <laughs> we'll see i think so quad and dr heavenly and Dr. Simone, they have much of conversation about the issues that's going on in their relationship. And, you know, Dr. Simone said her piece, which is what we already know. But Quad put it out from her that she doesn't feel appreciated from her husband. She feels like she's being taken advantage of. Um, not taken advantage of. Wrong wording. She feels like she's being used and not appreciated. She feels like, okay. Money is always a part of it. Now I have some money. I can actually pay for the mortgage on our house. You know, pay f for at least a year flat. No problem. You don't want the money. And obviously we know sometimes in relationships this happens a lot where if that's something with the position of power, Quad is a big personality. So her husband probably subconsciously found a way, oh, well, if I pay for all this stuff and I'm responsible with all this all these other things what the heck is that anyway um then maybe i can go and control the situation or have a little bit of power so now we're at dr jackie's event and all of the girls except for all the ladies i should say all of the ladies are there except for dr simone because she's going to be on call which means that at any moment's time she could get a call saying we need you to come in to handle x y and z so everyone gets there, and as we know, there's a mess. Once they do the, it was cool because the obstacle course, it was funny. They were, they were doing the bouncy balls, and they were doing the tug of war. It looked like some hula hoop. Um, it was cool. It was cool. They had fun, but then we get to the meat potatoes of this. Toya decided she wanted to go and talk to Dr. Heavenly about, um, you know, the issue with Contessa. Dr. Heavenly's trying to figure out why are you bringing this to me? Why are you Why are you in the middle of this? See, you're messy. You're trying to go make something out of something bigger than what it is. I don't know what the real issue is. I need to go and talk to the girl. Why am I talking to you? Toy's like, hold up. We've been friends for all these years and you're treating me like this? No, I'm not going to take that from you. It's like, I'm not going to take this from you. This doesn't make any sense. And then we get this argument between them and it starts to get petty. And I said, no. So then T Contessa because this is who it's supposed to be about, comes out and says, look, I wanted to talk to you because, you know, I did, I came in defensive into a group and so I have my guard up. So I'm sorry if that was the energy you're feeling, not even if, I'm sorry I overreacted and that is what it is. Not is what it is and that's what it was. Of course, Dr. Heavenly loved that. I said, Contessa, see, you're so grown. That's what I would have done. I would just been like, even though I know you full, that that's all right. Let you stay being full, and I'm gonna stay nice and squeaky clean. It was me. It was, I do that all the time. Oh, I'm I'm sorry. Even if I know uh, it was because yeah, I don't want to hear your mouth. I don't want to see you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Th that's right. Yeah, peace, peace in the Middle East, peace all over the world. Yeah, that's right. You trash, but mm, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. Even if it's not coming out of my mouth. So now. Dr. Simone goes and has, they have therapy, but their therapist is out of the state, so they're going to go and do a uh, Skype call. Now, it was it was good, too. I said, that connection is good. The picture is good. I said, shout out to them. Their issues run deep, though, because I already told you about the church story. <laughs> the main thing is communication. The main thing is Dr. Simone, she brings up the past to use his power, use his leverage to say, ha, you did do this. You did do that. You are wrong. You are wrong. Blah, 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 blah. Her husband hates it. And the, the uh, therapist picked up on it. Like, you look very frustrated and irritated when you hear your wife speak. And she was like, yes. And he was like, yes. You're, yeah, you're right. And that's a dangerous place to be in. And you can tell her. He's just like, all right, keep talking, keep talking. Uh, uh. Um, but, but she's like, she doesn't feel love. She doesn't feel appreciated. She just feels like she works, works, works. And he just kind of looks at her like, and what? And we all work. What's the problem? So they have a lot going on. Uh, oh, Lord. I want to take a nap.
and I can because this is done. Please like, comment, subscribe. Come back next week.